Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Nilajri Mukherjee and I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I practice here in Guelph, Ontario. Uh, so how do you move to Canada from the Philippines? The reason I am focusing on Philippines at this point in time is a couple of reasons. Number one reason is that uh, I was fortunate enough in these many years to work with a lot of clients from the Philippines um, and all of them have been amazing. All of them have their excellent language skills. They have been excellent clients and most of them have made through Canada. So working with Filipino clients are one of the most extreme, um, you know, pleasures that we have had. That's number one. Secondly, if you look at the Statistics Canada website, the government is telling you that out of all the immigrants that come to Canada, uh, Filipinos are having the highest number of employment, meaning that Filipino immigrants are the highest number of employed immigrants in Canada. That says a lot. And I could tell you is that most of the employers know the, knows this and most of the Canadian government officials knows this fact as well. Why this is important for them to know, I will address that in the later part of the video. And thirdly, last but not the least, I have been to Philippines uh, once back in the days, I believe 2015 or 16. And really fell in love with the country and really fell in love with the beaches, the amazing beaches and its people. And most importantly, the kind of, uh, you know, the political situation that the country is going through, I would imagine that uh, uh, more and more number of Filipinos would want to call Canada home in the year 2022 or 2023. So how do you really make it happen? It's important for it to understand and most of you would know by now is that express entry draws whenever that comes in in the month of July or something, the cutoff is going to be at least 500 or maybe 490 plus, most likely 500 plus, right? So if you are having a series of 500 or maybe 490 or something, you just have to wait. You do not have to do anything. But for those that do not have that kind of series or will not be able to achieve that kind of series by putting all kinds of effort, right? Because no matter whatever you do, unless and until you fall in, in a certain age bracket, your CRS, your CRS will not reach beyond a point. Your CRS will not go beyond a point. So we then have to really dig deeper and, and have to think what really could be done if I'm not able to achieve that kind of a CRS. If you have seen the topic of the video, if you've seen the title of the video, I requested you to sort of try to identify what your own strength and focus on this. And the reason that I have said all these points before is that I have been to Philippines and that I have been working with the Filipino clients for a long time. And the Filipinos are the most employed immigrants as per Statistics Canada is for a reason. And that is Filipinos are one of those few people that I have seen, at least from my experience, that are extremely polite with excellent language skills and with excellent people behavior. These attributes are hugely appreciated by Canadian employers, right? If you have to face an interview with a Canadian employer today, for example, I could tell you and I could guarantee you that the 70% of the discussion is going to be about your soft skills. They're going to assess your soft skills rather than your technical aspect. Because somebody with experience, somebody with qualification and experience are expected to do certain kind of jobs anyways, right? And if you are not able to perform at the job, there will be training and development. But one particular aspect that is not that that really cannot be developed unless and until you have that on your own is your soft skills, is your interpersonal skills. Because no matter if you are not soft individual, no matter how many you know training and development and you know soft skills trainings that you go through, you will still not be able to achieve that level of you know proficiency in that aspect. Meaning that you really have to see and uh, introspect and analyze what really makes you special. In my opinion, your soft skills. In my opinion, your language. And try to capitalize on those aspects. How? Say, for example, if you're reaching in the CRS of 400 or if you're sitting in the CRS of maybe even 420 or 430, a Canadian job offer would really change the situation for you altogether, right? And if you can convince an employer in the Atlantic, uh, you know, in the Atlantic region, then you could very well immigrate to Atlantic immigration uh, you know, program. But if you're you know, planning to come here as a student, of course, you can come here as a student. But in this video, I'm trying to talk about the, uh, you know, about the processes that would make you spend less amount of money as compared to an international student, which is obviously quite expensive, right? Which is why I say that you have to focus on your strength. You have to do a sort of a SWOT analysis, a strength, weakness, opportunity, threat analysis, and have to identify what really makes you special. And as I've said, you know, from my personal observation, at least, Soft skills, your interpersonal skills, your people behavior is what makes you special. Focus on that. 
try to get in contact with the employers like the way it has been done in Canada. Build a good LinkedIn profile, build a good Canadian CV and then try to touch base with the employers. What I could tell you uh, is that the number of vacancies across the field is at really all time high here in Canada and the individuals and the corporations are not getting desired individuals, qualified individuals to work on those positions, to fulfill those positions. So the employment demand is at an all time high, but at the same time, you really have to approach and you know, a Canadian employer, if you're outside Canada, obviously in a manner that is being appreciated here in Canada, that has been desired in Canada, which is why really sending CVs to all the employers in the same way will not work. You really have to work on custom emails. You really have to change your CV. You have to custom your CV to that very specific requirement. You may want to get in touch with that HR head or maybe the division head over LinkedIn, have sort of a channel of communication going on before you just bombard them with your CVs. So once fits in for all approach really will not going to work at this point in time, you really have to be custom. A job offer is something that you can definitely look at and try to capitalize on uh, the unique things that really make you special. If you are, if you want to show your extra commitment, a great option would be to apply for a Canadian visit visa. And my suggestion would be to visit those Atlantic provinces, try to get in contact with the employers and try to really convince them to you know schedule an interview because once you get a job offer and if the employer is designated under APP, your post job offer paperwork will be very, very, very easy. And most likely you will call Canada home as a permanent resident within like two to three months of getting that job offer. But even if your employer is not designated, they can really get designated, you know, get, you know, having them get, getting designated, it's not really a complicated process and it's a completely free process. Right. In, in fact, I have worked with them, uh, you know, with the, you know, with the resource, uh, which has been hired by the employer without knowing that they have to be designated. But then I have helped the employer to get designated as well. And that really it took a month. The employer was based out of New Brunswick. Right. So focus on that. A good approach, if you can, will be to apply for a can, uh, you know, to apply for a Canadian visit visa. Come to Canada this summer, maybe in July or August, even if you make an application now in the month of May, you will probably get a decision by the end of June or maybe the beginning of July, right? Because the decision time from Philippines is not very high. I do not remember the exact days, but I think it's it's between 38 to 55 days or something. So it really does not take that much amount of time. And having a Canadian visit visa is really an asset because you get a visa for 10 years if your passport is valid for 10 years. Right. And then you can come to Canada multiple times. You want you can meet those employers. You can come here, stay for a period of six months, explore the country. And once you are here, I could tell you is that the possibility of you being hired gets increased manifold. Right. Once an employer is able to meet you, once an uh, employer is able to know how good you are, they will be more than willing to hire you. And traditionally, as you guys already know, is that a lot of caregivers that we have in Canada, at least in Ontario, are from the Philippines. Right. And I could tell you is that a good number of caregivers are being hired through face to face kind of interactions. Right. And an employer in that case is just a household that can afford a caregiver. So if you're able to come to Ontario, at least then have a meeting set. And I could tell you is that there is a huge demand for caregivers here in Ontario, at least. I cannot talk about all of Canada, but I can certainly talk about Ontario here. And there is a huge demand of caregivers and the possibility of you being picked up will be very high. And the employers will definitely be eager to even proceed with the LMI route, right? So a lot of options are on the table. If you would like to uh, discuss your individual circumstances, a good idea will be to proceed with a professional consultation. Visit my website, novonation.ca, hop onto professional consultation tab, schedule a consultation, and I will be more than happy to assist you. I hope this helps. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye now.